The Grand Canyon holds secrets that scientists around the world have no idea how to explain, from the elusive mysterious caves where scientists discovered animal figurines to the discovery of the Supai village believed to be home to unique ancient people. And let's not forget the mystery of the Great Unconformity, which is a gap in the rock layers and represents a significant time gap from over a billion years. But the most interesting fact is why NASA studies the Grand Canyon so much and what we don't know about this mysterious interest from NASA inside this area. The Grand Canyon continues to shock scientists all over the world, so let's explain what is really going on in the mysterious Grand Canyon. In 1933, archaeologist Howard S. Colton led a team of researchers from the Museum of Northern Arizona to investigate a series of caves and rock shelters in the Grand Canyon. The initial goal of this expedition was to explore the geological history of the area and identify signs of early human habitation. What they found, however, exceeded their expectations and unveiled a significant chapter of prehistoric archaeology. During their excavations, in a location known as Rampart Cave, the team unearthed a particular artifact. It was a small animal figurine, delicately fashioned from a split twig. This initial discovery was the first of many split twig figurines to be found in the area. The figurines were often discovered carefully placed in dark crevices or under overhangs, suggesting they were intentionally deposited in such locations. Intriguingly, the initial findings were not immediately recognized for their archaeological value. It wasn't until later analysis and additional discoveries that the true significance of these objects began to be understood. As more caves were explored, more figurines were discovered, each one confirming the prevalence of this unique form of artifact in the area. Since Colton's original discovery, hundreds of split twig figurines have been found throughout the Grand Canyon, primarily within the limestone caves that dot the canyon walls. These figurines have been discovered in various states of preservation, with some nearly intact, while others are fragmentary, often due to rodent activity or the ravages of time. The meticulous process of collecting, documenting, and preserving these fragile artifacts has offered a fascinating and valuable look into the past. It is important to note that the split twig figurines found in the Grand Canyon are remarkable for their detailed craftsmanship, given the materials and tools that would have been available to their creators. Each figurine is typically between three to four inches long, although some larger examples have been found. The figurines are made from a single twig, usually willow or cottonwood, which is split down the middle and carefully folded back on itself. The intricacy of the figurine's construction is testament to the skills and patience of their creators. The creation process involves splitting the twig lengthwise, but not entirely. The unsplit part of the twig would form the animal's head. The split parts were then carefully twisted and folded to form the body and legs of the animal. The two ends of the split twig were often joined together using a tiny wooden peg to hold the structure in place. Additional twig fragments were sometimes used to create the animal's legs, while larger fragments or additional twigs could be used to form the neck and head of larger animals like deer or bighorn sheep. These animals not only provided food, but also raw materials such as hide, bone, and sinew for tool and clothing production. The meticulous crafting of these figurines and their animal forms suggest that they held considerable significance for their creators. One of the most intriguing characteristics of the split twig figurines is the placement of a small piece of pine pitch in the body of the animal, resembling an arrow. This feature has led many researchers to believe that the figurines had a ritualistic or symbolic purpose, potentially related to hunting practices. They could have been created as part of rituals to ensure successful hunts, or they may have served as talismans or tokens of gratitude after a successful hunt. The pitch, derived from pine trees, was likely chosen due to its adhesive properties and its widespread availability in the region. These figurines represent some of the oldest known artifacts in the Grand Canyon, a testament to the enduring legacy of human activity in this imposing landscape. Their existence aligns with the broader archaeological understanding of the archaic period in the American Southwest a time of gradual cultural development and increasingly complex social structures among the region's inhabitants. In addition, the story of Supai Village's discovery unfolds in parallel with the broader narrative of the exploration of the Grand Canyon. The discovery itself is multifaceted, involving not only geographical and cartographic elements, but also the interactions between Western explorers and the Havai Supai people who had resided in the area for centuries. In the annals of Western history, the discovery of Supai village traces back to the late 19th century. 
However, it's essential to acknowledge that this discovery didn't take place in the vacuum. The Havai Supai people, whose name translates to people of the blue-green waters, had inhabited the region for over 800 years before their first recorded contact with Europeans. Therefore, the village's discovery by European settlers was more an introduction to a foreign culture than a revelation of an uninhabited place. Initial records of the Havai Supai people interacting with the Europeans date back to 1776, when Spanish missionaries and explorers Francesco Anateso Dominguez and Francisco Silvestre Valles de Escalante noted the tribe's existence during their expedition. However, this brief encounter led to no substantial connections or further exploration of the region. In the mid to late 19th century, the tide turned. It was a time of westward expansion, driven by the philosophy of Manifest Dynasty, which held that the United States was destined to span from the Atlantic to the Pacific coast. With this movement came greater curiosity and exploration into the unknown depths of the American frontier, including the Grand Canyon and its environs. It was during this period that the first documented non-indigenous exploration into the Havai Supai lands occurred. In 1880, cartographer Frederick S. D'Alembaugh embarked on an expedition that marked a significant shift in Western knowledge about the region. D'Alembaugh and his team explored and mapped the Grand Canyon extensively, a mission that inevitably led them to the secluded Supai village. Their records of maps introduced Supai village to Western consciousness, albeit with the caveats of colonial expansion. D'Alembaugh's expedition, and others like it, showcased the fertile and lush region's uniqueness, characterized by its cascading turquoise waterfalls, rich vegetation, and isolation. Although the discovery of Supai village by Western explorers opened the region to outside interaction, the village and its inhabitants maintained much of their distinct lifestyle and culture. The seclusion of the village, nestled within the Grand Canyon's depths, and the Havai Supai's people's resilience contributed significantly to this preservation. Nonetheless, the discovery also set the stage for challenging times ahead, as expanding Western interests would soon infringe upon Havai Supai lands. The isolation of Supai village, tucked away eight miles deep within the rugged expanse of the Grand Canyon, forms the backdrop for its unique lifestyle and culture. The village remains one of the most remote communities in the continental United States, a reality that has both preserved its culture and shaped its residents' distinctive way of life. The village's isolation has also cultivated a unique cultural identity within the Havai Supai. Their traditions, language, and rituals have largely remained untouched by outside influence. This cultural preservation is significant considering the waves of change that have swept over many indigenous communities in the face of Western expansion and modernization. Moreover, the Grand Canyon is like a huge history book of Earth's rocks, where layers of rocks are piled on top of each other, formed over millions of years. However, when you explore deep into the canyon, you'll stumble upon something fascinating called the Great Unconformity. It's a gap in the rock layers that represents an astonishing billion years in certain spots. What makes it even more peculiar is that this Great Unconformity is found not only in the Grand Canyon, but also in rocks all over the world. And surprisingly, it always appears in rocks from a specific period, about 550 million years ago and even older. Barra Peak, a geology PhD student at the University of Colorado, Boulder, explained that while there are many unconformities found in different places, it's quite unusual to come across one that represents such a significant time gap from over a billion years ago to around 500 million years ago. Now, Barra Peak and her fellow researchers have discovered that in the Grand Canyon, the missing rock layers were erased due to a major shift in the Earth's crust, caused by the breakup of a supercontinent. This new information indicates that even though the Great Unconformity appears in the rocks worldwide, the cause behind its existence may vary from one location to another. The Great Unconformity is a gap where no rocks are present, but its age can be determined by the rocks above and below it. Instead of focusing on the age of the rock layers, Barra Peak and her team were interested when these rocks cooled down. When rocks are deeply buried, they experience high pressure and heat. However, if they cool down, it means they are getting closer to the surface because the rocks above them are eroding away. According to Peak, this cooling and exhumation process happens due to erosion, so their goal was to date the erosion process itself rather than the formation of the rocks. To achieve this, the scientists examined the mineral zircon within the rock to find trapped helium. 
Helium is produced when uranium changes into lead through radioactive decay. When the rocks are subjected to high heat, helium can escape from the mineral. However, in cooler rocks, the helium remains trapped. By measuring the layers of helium in a rock of a particular age, they could determine when that rock reached the surface and cooled down. Barra Peak and her fellow researchers examined the rock layers just below the Great Unconformity, which are older than it, at eight different locations in the Grand Canyon. They wanted to determine when the rocks above were eroded away. Surprisingly, they discovered that the timing of this erosion varied significantly. In the western parts of the canyon, on average, the rocks cooled down about 200 million years earlier than in the eastern part, which is located within the Grand Canyon National Park. What's more, the size of the Great Unconformity differs across the canyon. It appears smaller to the east. When it's at its smallest, the gap covers around 250 million years of missing rock layers. But at its largest, an astonishing 1.2 billion years of rock is absent from the record. The overall understanding is that the western part of the present-day Grand Canyon rose to the surface approximately 700 million years ago, while the eastern part rose closer to 500 million years ago. However, even with this general view, there are significant variations of tens or hundreds of millions of years in areas that are only a short distance apart. The variability in timing was likely caused by tectonic activity, as Barra Peak explained. Around 1 billion years ago, the supercontinent Rodinia formed, but it began to break apart roughly 750 million years ago. During this period, the region of the Grand Canyon experienced a lot of stretching and pulling apart due to the continent's rifting. This process resulted in a network of faults across the area, some of which can still be seen in the rocks today. At that time, as the continent was pulled apart, it created both elevated high points and low basins in the landscape. The high points had less sediment deposited on them, so their rocks were exposed and became visible. On the other hand, the basins collected sediment, which kept the rocks at their base buried and protected from erosion. This geological process contributed to the complex and varied rock formations we see in the Grand Canyon today. Barra Peak explained that over millions of years, erosion would have occurred all across the region. However, the amount of erosion might have varied on smaller scales, covering areas of tens of kilometers, possibly more in some locations. Currently, the researchers are applying the same method to determine the age of the erosion that created the Great Unconformity in other places across North America. They plan to extend their investigations beyond North America's borders. The initial findings indicate that the timing of the erosion differs significantly, even within the continent, as Barra Peak pointed out. Peak explained that their findings are indicating something interesting. Instead of a single global cause for the Great Unconformity, it appears that numerous events occurred during this period of over a billion years. It's just a coincidence that this gap of time aligns with the presence of the Unconformity everywhere. In other words, various factors contributed to the formation of the Great Unconformity across different locations, rather than one single cause affecting the entire planet. Also, it's interesting to point out that NASA conducts remote sensing studies, aerial surveys, or geological research that involves capturing images or data from satellites or aircraft that fly over the Grand Canyon. This research can contribute to understanding Earth's geological processes and changes over time. NASA's satellite observations and data can be used to study various aspects of the Earth, such as land cover changes, erosion, volcanic activity, tectonic movements, and other geological processes that might be indirectly relevant to understanding formations, like the Grand Canyon. By studying Earth's geology and landforms, scientists can gain insights into the planet's history, evolution, and its interaction with natural forces. It's important to note that NASA collaborates with various scientific organizations and researchers worldwide. The main goals for studying and exploring the Grand Canyon area from NASA is mysterious and unknown, so it's not publicly known why NASA is so interested in the Grand Canyon. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.